sure you ought to go there. I'm going to start reading. We got it up on the screen yet? No. Matthew chapter 13. There we go. There we go. All right. You stop texting me during church. Sit right in here. I don't know what y'all trying to tell me, but I'm not listening. <laughs> They're really trying to tell me something. It don't, it don't matter. I'm trying to help my people, man. I'm not reading it. Look, this. Boom. That's how you do it. You just drag that little circle down to the X. Some of y'all got iPhones, so you need instructions on how to do stuff. It's okay. You take you circle, you drag it down to the X. You know what? You'll save yourself some strife. If you learn how to take that little circle right there and just drag it down to the X. I think for some of y'all, it's a trash can. Just drag it down to the trash can. So some of these males... Some of the emails you get, you just. Huh? Am I going the wrong direction? How y'all do it? Just the one. In my mailbox, this means throw it away. This means read it. I don't know what y'all read. Some of y'all need some of this action right here. Just because people, your friend on Facebook, don't mean they should have instant access to you. Trust me, if you don't forward it to 50 people, you're not going to be cursed. I speak a blessing over your life right now. Stop forwarding little text messages to 50 people. Go read the word for yourself. You don't forward this message to 50 people, you're going to be, oh no. I'm saved by grace through faith and not by works, so no man can boast. So I don't got to do nothing. Oh, let me look in the camera for this one. I don't got to do nothing to accept salvation. I don't got to do nothing. I don't got to dance around or say nothing. I can just say, Jesus, I believe you died. And I believe you rose again. And that you are the son of God. And now I'm saved. With no evidence. You know what the evidence is of my salvation? A empty grave. Some of y'all don't know what we're shouting about. It's all right. Matthew chapter 13. <laughs> An empty tomb was there. To let everybody know that my Savior lives. I don't gotta do no trick for you. Say no thing, and I'm not saved. I don't have the Holy Spirit because I didn't do something. You, know, what's wrong with you? Who made this litmus test? Y'all can believe what y'all want to believe. As for me and my house. I'm really dealing with something right now. Like, it's for me and my house. We're going to read out of this thing. You can make up what you think it want to say. Matthew chapter 13. Let me, I'm going to read out the Bible so y'all don't, so y'all know I'm for real, for real. Can we read out the Bible today? Who got a paper Bible? God bless you. Who has a Bible app? God bless you. It works the same way. Ooh, I ain't going to get invited nowhere to preach. Lord have mercy. Don't matter. I like preaching here. Okay. Matthew chapter 13. <laughs> I haven't had a Mountain Dew or anything. I'm just in my bag this morning. Verse 3, 
And he spoke many things to them in story. Somebody say in story. Saying, behold, a sower went out to sow. And when he sowed some seeds, that some fell behind the roadside. Excuse me, beside the roadside. And the birds came quickly and ate them up. Others fell in rocky places where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up because they had no depth. Somebody say depth. You got to go deeper. You got to go deeper, man. The tallest plants have the deepest. So when the sun rose, when the heat came, they were scorched. And because they had no root, somebody say root. <laughs> they withered away and others fell among the thorns. And the thorns came up and choked them out. And others fell on good soil and yielded a good crop. Some 100 fold, some 60 fold, some 30 fold. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We give you glory. Lord, bless this church, God. Bless this house, God. Bless your people, God. Bless your people, God. Bless your people, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. High five three people and say it's going to be good today. He in his bag today. Say so he in his bag today. Really quick, before we go any further, I want to I do something significant. Listen, if you are a veteran, that means you served, you served honorably in one of our four service branches. If you are a veteran, could you please just stand up for me? We want to acknowledge you. Don't sit down. I'm not talking. Be obedient, Corinne. I just want to say uh, I speak for this entire house. And I say that we recognize freedom. And we know that freedom is not free. Freedom costs. Some of you, it costs families, marriages, first marriages. For some of y'all, it costs time and energy and things that you sow. Listen, for some of y'all, it costs you your mind. And you deal with stuff in your mind because of the sacrifice you gave to make sure we're free. I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. And I want to give you one more thing. I want to give you Amen. I want to give you a promise from God that says, he who waters will be himself watered. Nothing is for nothing. The promises of God are yes and amen. And because of what you have dedicated and donated and served, I believe that there is a necessary blessing. There is a, there is a harvest time on its way to you. Can y'all give it up for our service members one more time? Thank you so much. You can have your seat. Thank you so much. Um, tomorrow is Veterans Day. Look, you need to thank a veteran. Call a veteran. Say thank you so much. I don't care what they did. They, they volunteered. I don't care if they didn't go nowhere. Or not. They didn't go nowhere. Man, maybe they was like me. They got out 18 days before 9-11. I didn't, I didn't, it just worked out that way. 18 days later, they would have stopped me from getting out. I'll play, you're gone. Okay? And some of these people have been on deployment after deployment after deployment. Some of them have been here, came here to church, went on a deployment, and then came back here. And you don't realize you're free because of that sacrifice. Come on, one more time, man. Thank you. I don't care why you went in. You volunteered. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. So, Let's let's get let's get going. I need five minutes, give me. Okay. 
early. No, I'm going to get y'all out of here. So we, we started last week talking about the, the sower. Amen. We talked about the sower. We talked about the sower. But unfortunately, uh, last week, probably both fortunately and unfortunately, I, I didn't get past essentially the first verse. We said there was a sower and he scattered some seed. And I talked to y'all about sowing. And I talked to y'all about seed. But there's three main characters in this parabola. Okay? There's three main characters in this, in this parable, in this story. There's three main characters. There is the, the sower. And there is the seed. And then there is the soil. Last week we talked about sowers. We talked about seed, and we didn't get to talk about soil. So this week, we're going to talk about soil. Now, the beautiful thing about uh, a parabola that Jesus gives us is this, that you could be any character. You have to juxtapose yourself against the story. Does that make sense? You have to juxtapose yourself against the story. So when, he, when he's talking about uh, Mary and Martha, the Bible says that Mary was worshiping and Martha was working and Lazarus was sick. Mary was worshiping and Martha was working and Lazarus was sick. Y'all excuse my voice. Y'all, this is me. Okay, don't turn those up. <laughs> don't turn these up. Y'all just going to have to lean in a little closer to try to hear me what I'm saying. Okay? He who has an ear... All right, here we go. Can y'all hear me in the back? Wave your hands if you can hear. There you go. Amen. If they can hear, you can hear. If Jeff could hear, y'all could hear. Okay. So, so he said. He said Martha was worshiping and Mary and Mary was. Uh, excuse me. Mary was worshiping and Martha was working and and, and Lazarus was sick and, and Lazarus died. And and you sometimes you gotta say, well, I'm the worshiper. My season, in my season right now, I'm the worshiper. But what is my responsibility to my brother who's sick? I can't just keep worshiping if my brother's sick. I got to do something about it. I can't stay in this my position, whatever my position is. Too many times, oftentimes, the church is in a place with their hands up while Lazarus is sick. And we're not doing nothing about the fact that Lazarus is sick. We're just happy that we saved, that God brought us out of the water. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all, God brought us out of the water and into the boat. And we went down to the Lido deck and started eating ice cream instead of helping poor people up. Out of, some of y'all never been on a cruise. It's okay. We went down to the Lido deck. We went down to the buffet and started eating. And, no, and nobody's worried about the people who are still drowning. Sometimes I'm Mary with my hands up. Sometimes I'm Martha. And I'm working in the church and I'm so busy working in the church. I'm so busy working in the church that, that I'm allowing the organization to kill the organism. I'm allowing the rules and laws. No, we don't help people on Monday. We off on Mondays. We, t- we take a Sabbath on Monday. So if you're starving on Monday, I'm sorry, you got to go to the Sam shelter. You can't come to the church because the organization is killing the organism. I'm working so hard that I forgot that Lazarus is sick. So I got to figure out if, I'm, if I have gifts of administration. I got gifts of administration. I still have to have a keen perception about what Jesus cares about. My heart has to still break about what Jesus cares about. And I can't just follow rule after rule after rule and regulation after regulation after regulation. And I realize that I have a responsibility to my sick brother. Sometimes I'm Mary. Sometimes I'm Martha. But Dominique, sometimes I'm Lazarus. Help me. Help me. Brother, sister, help me. I know y'all sing your song. The music sounds great, but help me. I know y'all doing all your organization. You got it all in order. And I know y'all off on Mondays, but ding, ding, ding. I'm going to ring the ring doorbell. Help me. Somebody, please help. So I get to be every character in the story. I get to be every character in the story. The problem with most of us is that we are the protagonists in all our stories. Jamon, do you know that it's possible to be the protagonist of your story, but an antagonist of somebody else's? Lord, forgive me. My, oh, let me just make sure everybody's with me. The protagonist is the good guy. The antagonist is the bad guy. 
in your story, you're always the good guy. Because you always know the reason why you did what you did and you justify what you did with your reasoning and you try to make it make sense to you. But the truth is, if you hurt somebody, you hurt somebody, you owe them an apology, you, you think you're the protagonist. But in this story, and instead of thinking you're the hero, why don't you just try apologizing? You don't know what she did to me. It don't matter what she did to me. Be overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. What if she don't receive my apology? The Bible, Jesus tell us what to do. If they don't receive you, dust the dirt off your shoes. Look, y'all just help me bless myself. Look. Dust the dirt off your shoes and keep it moving. Some of y'all need a spirit of Kim. Keep it moving. Lord, I pray for the spirit of Kim to fall over this hole. In Jesus' name, the spirit of Kim. I'm coming down there with the oil. Kim, come down now. Kim. <laughs> Somebody just jumped on the live stream like, What? They preaching heresy in that church. I'm trying to, I'm a practical preacher. Okay? Listen, I, I help, I'm hear my heart right here. It don't do no good to come here every Sunday shouting, screaming, and not change. Some of y'all leaving here sweaty, but you didn't accomplish anything. What changed? There should be something that's happening on the inside. You should be, you should be riding around here with something in your mind. Your kids gonna be like, "What's wrong, Mama?" Something's not the same. Somebody say, "PD, you changed. We were supposed to, man." The problem is you didn't. You're doing the same stuff you was doing when we were 16. This is like the fifth time I preached to somebody who wasn't in the room, but I'm dealing with some stuff today. Okay, so, so, so you have to see yourself. You have to see yourself as a character in the Bible, and you have to place your, you have to juxtapose yourself in, in every position. Now, for most of you guys, what we talked about last week, I said you are the sower right? You are the sower. You are the sower. Now, if you didn't sow, pause. You are only known, you can only add the ER to a verb if you do it regularly. Don't call yourself a sower if you don't sow. PD, I don't have nothing to sow. You got time, talent, and treasure. Sow something. If you didn't sow a seed, uh, a, a seed last week, maybe you should have went and just took out your neighbor's trash all the way down the street. I'm just going to sow something because I don't have no money to sow, but I'm going to sow something because I, uh, I need God to see and recognize my seed. Are y'all with me in this Anglican church today? <laughs> y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I need something, I need something to, to, to fertilize my seed. Okay, so I got something to sow. Look at your neighbor and say, I got something to sow. It may not be much, but it's something. It may not be much, but it's something. Whatever I have, whatever I have is God's. Y'all hear me? So, but if that doesn't, if that's not applicable to you, then you might miss the point of this story. Because this story is for sowers. I also talked about seed. This is my introduction. Y'all going to have to bear with me today. Some of y'all got chicken in the oven. It's cool. Do what you got to do. It might be 13 of us in here, but we're going to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to be tearing this place up. <laughs> Where was I? So, <laughs> see, sower, some of y'all are the seed. You think you have a seed, but you are a seed. 
and God puts you in certain places. He puts you in certain environments. And you don't realize that you're there in that environment to change that environment forever. If you plant a seed, hear me right here. Oh, Jesus. If you plant a seed in an in, 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 in empty field, all of a sudden, that field becomes an orchard. Because even the fruit that's not picked is going to die. More seeds going to go in the ground. And all of a sudden, so what you did, what you don't understand that you did even last week, when you sowed a seed, you changed your generation. You changed, you forever something else. Oh, y'all not with me. You forever something else. Sometimes you got to sow in a place where there is barrenness because you're going to be the first thing that changes everything in that place. If you believe that, if you got a seed for your kids, if you got a seed for your family, can you just take 30 seconds and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I changed everything. Hear me right here. Some of y'all are the first people saved in your family. You changed everything. You don't realize everybody don't have, I'll, I'll, I'll give my father some credit. He changed everything. Even the ones of us who still do bad. We think about it. <laughs> I'll be like, oh Lord Jesus, I don't know. I probably shouldn't do this right here. Some of y'all have heard my testimony. I, I, tell it, I tell it on the mountain. Some of y'all have heard my, I come back from sin. I be riding the bus, coming back from sin, crying like a baby. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. I didn't mean to do it. I meant to do it, but. Oh, y'all, you'll hear me right here. But what happened is by, by the seed that my father, not the seed that he planted, the seed that he was, it switched something in our generation. And now all of y'all are produce of the seed that he was. You need to hear me right here. You need to hear me right here, okay? I know y'all don't know him, but sometimes you need to just say, thank you, Jesus, for Bishop Banks. <laughs> Lord, protect him. Watch over him. Protect his car. Keep everything together. Because he was a seed. Do y'all hear me right here? And for some of y'all, you are a seed to your generation. Margo, Lord Jesus, him in the name of Jesus. You switch, you change everything. Cameron will be different. His kids will be different. His kids, kids will be different. Y'all don't hear me in here. Y'all don't hear me in here. You change everything. Of y'all in here, yeah, it's the same way. You change everything. Survey says 60% of the people in this room didn't go to a regular church service before they went here. 60%. You changed everything. Come on, just give yourself a give yourself a praise. Thank you, Jesus, for me. But finally, the last character in the story is the soil. Somebody say the soil. Sometimes you're the sower. Sometimes you're the seed. Sometimes you're the soil. Sometimes you're a sower. Sometimes you're the seed. Sometimes you're a sower. I have a lot of notes, y'all, but this is in my spirit, so I, I might go back to those, but forgive me if I don't. Okay? You are the soil. So he talked about three different types of soil. Now, I need you to understand something. Every seed can't grow in every soil. Some seeds only grow in certain soils. I'm trying to help you right here. Because a lot of your friends and relatives, I don't want to go to church. The church is boring. No, you were in the wrong soil. I don't want to do this. Because, no, you were in the wrong soil. And oftentimes, you can be planted, but in the wrong soil and not receive the growth that you're supposed to receive. And you'll think it's, it, you'll think it's you. There's certain seeds that grow in certain soils. And I'll be sitting there thinking, there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me because I didn't grow, because I didn't expand, because I didn't break out. But no, baby, there's not nothing wrong with you. Sometimes you're just in the wrong Fruitfulness comes from being in the right soil. 
you got to understand something. That, does that make sense? And every soil is different. Say that. Every soil is different. Every soil is different. And so what you got to know is that I, 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 even I as a soil, certain seeds will work with me and certain seeds won't work with me. I just gave you permission. No, now you, now if you, if you pluck out every seed, you're going to be barren. But there's certain, there's only certain seeds that'll work in your, in the right season. This is, are y'all getting it? Are y'all with me? In the right season, the right seed will produce the right fruit in the right time. Does that make sense? So I got to have the right seeds around me and I got to be the right soil. Some of y'all hear me, ladies, women, hear me right here. You're not the best soil for everybody. That should be freeing for you because you, you thought it didn't work because of you. It didn't work because I'm not the right soil for you. <laughs> it didn't work because I'm not the right soil for you. Does that make sense? And the right person can come along and all of a sudden you'll have a beautiful garden because of the right seed. Are y'all with me today? Okay, all right, all right. So right seed, right soil. And you got to understand that different, different, uh, different soils respond differently to different things. Uh, hear me right here. You know, you got to understand this. The same sun... That, that will melt a crayon will harden clay. The sun didn't change. The substance did. Are y'all with me today? The same, the same sun that will melt a crayon will harden clay. It's something different about the chemical molecular the chemical molecular structure of that particular thing. And so where, where some of y'all feel scorched, It has to do with your certain chemical molecular structure. Does that make sense? So a good sower knows how to test soil. I don't just put my seed in anything. Any old thing. I'm preaching. This is, this is deep. Man, this is deep. I know how to test the soil. Before I start sacrificing seed, I'm going to test the soil. Okay, so in this particular pericope, there are four types of soil. The first type of soil is this. The first type of soil is the wayside. Somebody say the wayside. What is the wayside? The wayside is a, is a beaten down path. It's, a, it's the same path. It's the path that people have walked down, people have walked on. People have walked over to commercial really quickly. Um, do you, you guys know where the word trailblazer comes from? I love you, Shay Shay. Oh, my sister in here. I love you, girl. Uh, Y'all know what a trailblazer is? Huh? The word trailblazer comes from, it's really, it's really an American term. Because as they were, as they were searching out new land, searching out new territory, what they would do is they would not only just run their, uh, their carts or whatever through the land, they would set the ground on fire. And it would harden the ground so that the next person coming through could see where the ground was hard and they could follow that trail all the way from New York to California because there wasn't any roads. I was making the road. Some of y'all, hear me right here, you were a trailblazer. You set the ground on fire. You set the ground. And now other people will be able to follow the trail. And you keep wondering why your life is a raging inferno. I'm blazing a trail. Ravon, I'm blazing a trail. Of course it's a fire. I'm blazing a trail. Ain't nobody did this particular thing that I'm doing. And if they did do it, they didn't go this way. Ooh, Tabby, I just helped myself. Okay, so the, the first C was about the wayside. Somebody say the wayside. Y'all ever seen, you know, you've been walking and you, you, you've seen the trail. Y'all, I'm from the hood. We call it the trail. 
Some of y'all call it the forest, but it's not the forest for us. Because we don't care about the trees, we care about the trail. <laughs> not about the trees, about the trail. I got to follow the trail. Okay? You'll be in that forest following a trail that you didn't make, but you'll just be walking. It must be this way. <laughs> y'all not from the hood. You ain't been outside your house. You better stop playing Xbox. Go follow the trail. It must be this way. There's got to be a way. Man, I've been in, okay, look, I'm just talking to y'all now. I've been in a forest where the trail led me all the way back to the place where I came in. And I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Who made this trail? Who blazed this trail? <laughs> I was trying to get to the Super S. Y'all not with me today. <laughs> so, <laughs> all the East Side people was like, yes. Yes! Super S, yes! <laughs> if you don't know, now you know, baby. So, so what happened was Jesus, back to Jesus, come with me. Jesus said that, that, that a, a sower would sow his seed. Now, I need y'all to understand something else. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. It's all in here. Y'all need to redo this yourself. It's all in here. He said the sower would sow his seed. I need you to hear me right here because you, your responsibility is just to sow. I said to this side over here. Your responsibility is just to sow. Illy, I'm just going to sow. Some good ground, some not so good ground. Some good, some righteous, some not righteous. I'm just going to sow. It's not my job to figure out what everybody's doing, but how everybody, hey, am I going to get paid back? Am I going to get, no, it's my job to sow. It's my job to see. I have a responsibility to cast out seed. And some of y'all don't have the fruit because you stingy with the seed. Dante, can I borrow? Sure. You never pay it back? That's bad soil. <laughs> when the ground is scorched, I'm done over there. You just don't know. I'm a good friend to have. You better pay back that $30. Now, don't get it twisted. If I needed it, I wouldn't have gave it to you. When you give out something you need, that's a loan. That's not. I'm preaching in this Anglican church today, boy. The Bible says that some of the seed, because the sower sows indiscriminately. Some of the seed is going to fall on hard places, on, 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 on the wayside. See, the wayside is the hard place. It's a place that's been beaten down. And I want you to hear me right here because there's some wayside people in here. And the reason you can't hear, even right now, the reason you can't receive right now is because you've been beaten down. You've been beat on and stepped on. You came from a, a, another church experience where the pastor was a hoe. I mean, uh. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Sometimes I just open my mouth. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will give you utterance. Or... Or he was a manipulator. He used the word in a way to get you to do what he wanted you to do. Or maybe he was just angry. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. You better go to hell. Teach me how not to sin. Instead of telling me how I'm going to go to hell. 
what's the way not to go to hell? Can you tell me that, Pastor, please? Can you help me to get not to hell? I want to pass go, collect my $200. How do I not go to hell? Or you come from a group of, hear, hear me right here. I'm not trying to dog people out. I'm trying to help you right here. Or you come from a group of people that would judge you. And so now every time you're in church, you're thinking, what we thinking about you? I wonder what they think about what I got on. Do my shoes match my shirt? Do my shoes? That's why, where would you want to wear in here? If you want to, like my Uncle Leslie in here, he is sharp. He is casket sharp right now. He looked good. I'm glad he dressed the way he comfortable dressing for church. But you might be comfortable in your tennis shoes and, and your new I am a priest uh, hoodie on sale next week at God Church of Community. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. The wayside. We laughing, but I'm serious. Some of y'all, that's why you can't receive the word of God at all. And you go to church out of some vain obligation, but you haven't received the word of God in a really long time because you don't trust. You're not open. Seed can't take root. You're not open to it. You wondering right now, when, when are you going to be done? How long is Y'all usually have church this long? What time y'all usually at? You're not open. You're not open. And you're going to miss a miracle. You're going to miss a blessing. You're going to miss what God is trying to do in your life because you've hardened your heart. The Bible says, harden not your heart unto me. The day that I come to you, receive me. Harden not your heart unto me. And you've been in the church service, after church service, after church service, and you just decided about me, about us, about them, about the people who shouting. You made a decision. I'm not like y'all. And God said, you're missing the opportunity to have fruitfulness in your life because you're so hard. Some of y'all, it's not so, um, it's, 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 it's not so obtuse. It's not so, it's, it's not so apparent. Some of you had to be hard. The way you grew up, you had to be hard. You had to be not trusted. Some of y'all have been molested by people who you thought were supposed to love you. Some of y'all have been tricked and bamboozled by people who you think you learned how to be hard. You said, I ain't going to let nobody take advantage of me. Cement. Forget the trailblaze. I'm just going to lay cement. I'm going to make a sidewalk. And God said, this is the season where I'm going to be breaking up that cement. I'm going to be digging in that cement. I'm going to be breaking up that cement so that the seed can take root. But if you waste our soil, hear me right here. We're going to have an altar call in a little while. We're going to have an altar call. I want you to know, don't leave this church without coming to agreement with somebody about why your heart is so hard. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give one more point about this. Stop missing worship. I know you're like, I don't, Andy, I don't sing. I don't like to sing sometimes. I don't want to. Hey, don't, you, 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 what the worship is intended to do is plow up the ground trying to rake up the ground so you can forget about your circumstance so you can forget about your situation so you can forget about the fact that your kid's not passing so you can forget about the fact that you think they got ADD, HD and so you can get into a place where you can just lift your hands and say whatever my station whatever my circumstance God you deserve the glory it could be worse you deserve the honor let me take about 30 seconds and just give you praise right now in the middle of everything Break up the follow ground. 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 There's a necessary breaking that has to happen. We're not just in here jumping because we like to jump. 
If we need exercise, we'll join the gym. It's cheaper. Oh, you've been here trying to break up something. All of a sudden, when I start moving in the spirit, atmosphere starts shifting. When I start moving my hand. Well, listen, in the beginning of the year, I'm going to preach to you all about praise. There are seven different words for praise. Seven different words for praise. And one of them is toda. Toda means I'm going to go crazy in this place. And I'll become even more undignified than this. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've been through. I've been through too much not to worship it. Got a toda in my spirit. So he said, he said, this soil will see one fold. He said something else interesting. He said, the thorns are coming. Birds are coming. He said, the birds are coming. The birds are coming. Well, they, the disciples asked that same question in Mark. The Bible said they didn't ask it in front of everybody. They waited till everybody left. <laughs> and then they said, yo, 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 Jesus. <laughs> what's the birds? What's the birds about, man? I understand the ground, but what's the birds? He said, the birds are Satan. Jesus said the birds are Satan. This is in Mark. He said the birds are Satan. It's demonic forces that when the seed doesn't take root, the birds just come and pick it up. They just pick it up and fly it away. What's that mean? As soon as you get in your car. As soon as you get out the parking lot. All of a sudden somebody cut you off. You'd be like, you know what? I almost showed them what y'all really be doing. I don't want to keep it too real in here. It's the birds. We just preach about love, joy, peace, kindness, long suffering. You walked out like you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. Now you got road rage. You ain't even five minutes later. You got anxiety. You mad. You shaking the. Some of y'all married. It's a different type. You get in the car. You ask her, you hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. Where you want to go? I don't know. Let's go to Sea Island. Mm, I don't want to see Island. You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you. We give you all the. Nigga, got a private worship moment right here. I'm not saying that happens in my car. I'm just saying it could happen. It could happen. You don't even make it past the year. You don't even forget Sea Island. Y'all about to be divorced by the time y'all get to the house. You in the house eating a hot pocket, mad. You don't know what to do. Birds, the birds, the birds, the birds. Be careful with the birds. Be careful. I, I don't even like, I tell our team, don't have a meeting after church. Don't have a meeting after church. You're going to mess up all the, all the work we did. You're going to be like, well, you know what you could have did better. No, let's talk about that on Monday, player. If you're going to have a meeting after church here, it needs to be a good job, everybody. Here's a $5 Starbucks gift card. Y'all have a good day. Y'all hear me where I'm at? The birds. Somebody say the birds. The birds. You got to be careful. The birds, man. The birds will eat your blessing. You already hard. You already tough. Now here come the birds. Watch who you answer the phone with when you leave church. You know, it's an unknown caller. God bless you. Yeah. The birds. The birds. The birds. The birds. When we first started this church, I would turn my ringer off, after, like during church, and then I I make up my mind not to check my phone till Monday morning. You can ask my team; they'll be calling me, asking me what to do about this or this or that. I don't know. The birds, 
Are y'all with me today? Okay, somebody give God glory right now. Just let's get back in this place. Now, the second ground, somebody say the second ground. The second ground is thorny ground. Oh, no, no, no. See, I'm looking up there, y'all. Y'all done messed me up. Birds, birds, birds. Look, look. No, I'm just kidding. I love my team. Uh, the, 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 the second ground is, is, is rocky ground. Now, I need you to understand this. I, I, I don't speed this up, but I need you to understand this because we live in San Antonio. We live in the hill country. And what you, what, what you need to know is that this whole city is built on stony ground. <laughs> this entire city is built on stony ground. It's hard to break up. That's why there's demonic forces, Kevin, that are fighting against this church, that are fighting against other churches. And they have churches fighting against churches and pastors fighting against pastors because it's stony. Stony ground. It's hard to break up. It's, it's, it's stony. And the Bible says this. This is the problem with stony ground is that if with stony ground, you can fake it. The wayside people can't fake it. They're just hard. They can't fake it. It's just me, play. It's me. The stony ground people can fake it because the Bible said that the seed will get in the ground and it'll start to grow. But it never takes root. I'm not going to go to a church 52 weeks out of the year and not have no root. Not have no foundation and principles. What am I learning here? What am I picking up here? This is just the huddle for us. Y'all got to go out the game. This is not the game. This is the huddle. Y'all got to go out and play the game. But if you posting scriptures on Sunday and cussing on Monday, you stony ground. Are y'all with me today? Are you stony ground? And so what happens is it looks good. You dress up. You bought a hat. You learn how to. Yeah, I learned it too. Pick them up, put them down. That's it. Step and step. That's it. The music is going to do and you'll look good. You learn this. You learn to shout. You learn, you learn tongues. You didn't receive the gift of tongues. You learn tongues. You learn how to say shop, bop, bop, dip, bop, bop, dip, bop, 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 bop. Ain't no power behind it. Ain't no Holy Spirit behind it. But you hear the old boy shine now. Ain't nothing changing. You learn how to fake it. You stony ground. You got just enough seed to where it looks leafy. But no fruit will ever be produced from it. I don't want to be stony ground. I don't want to be stony ground. The Bible said when the sun comes, this is what I was talking about. When the sun comes, the Bible said it'll scorch what little old leaves you got. Soon as some heat comes, soon as some trouble comes, all of a sudden you out of there. All of a sudden you quitting. Hear me right here. All of a sudden you change the church. They don't understand me over there. I'm different. They don't get me. No, you stony ground. You didn't have four churches in three years. You stony ground. You're stony ground. Sit down somewhere. Let somebody tell you something. Soon as the heat is applied, the Bible says those little plants dry up. Those little plants, because they, listen, little plants have little root. The bigger the plant, the deeper the root. Y'all hear me right here? The deeper the plant, the bigger the plant, the more complex the root system. So you're not just going to make me mad one day and I quit the church. Or I quit my job. That's why they ask you for your resume. They don't really want to know what you know. Because the resume don't tell me what you know. You know what a resume tell me? Do you have the ability to stick and stay? Do you have the ability to stay in there? To hang in there? Do you have... Mo, mo, <laughs> oh, Lord. I can, I can teach y'all something. I'll help you right here. Some of y'all need a skill set resume. A skill set resume is not time-based. You just need to say, this is what I know, this is where I went to school, these are the skills that I have. Because when you turn in a time-based resume, it say I had this job for three months, and then I had this job for two months, and then the manager didn't like me. Everybody don't like you. Everybody don't like you. 
in stony ground. I'm, de- I'm praying for deliverance from, from temporary, hear me right here. I'm praying for d- deliverance for some temporary people in here. You just temporary. You get everything get old fast. You tired of being a wife. You tired of being a mom. You tired of this job. You just got it three months ago. You was praising God two months ago. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now you hate it. Hate everybody there. No, that's stony ground. Get to where you can break up the ground so something can take root. Listen, listen, listen. Every promise comes with a process. If you forsake the process, you're going to miss the promise. Boy, I'm preaching in... You mad about the process, you're going to miss the promise. You got to go through something. Jesus' goal wasn't to be crucified. His goal was to die for us. But he had to go through crucifixion. And if you quit during the crucifixion, you'll never wear the crown that comes with resurrection. So you got to take it. You got to take it. The Bible said they pulled out his beard. You got to take it. Spit in his face. You got to take it. To pierce him in his side. And you saying, Pastor Dante, I don't think it's worth it. Well, if it's not worth it, then fine. But if it's worth it, you better hang in there. Your family? Worth it. Your kids? Worth it. Let me help you right here. Your finances. Worth it. Finance brings freedom. And who the son says free. All right. Last one. Y'all ready? Y'all still with me? Okay. All right. Last one is stony ground. Again, Mark, we, we can refer to Mark for the disciples who are like, okay, okay, I got the birds. That's cool. What's the thorns? What's the thorns? And then Jesus says something really weird. He said, he said, thorns are lust and deceit. So if I'm soil, thorns are lust and deceit. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, it, it, the Bible says the devil only has three tricks. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Some of y'all need to be taking notes right now. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Now, lust is wanting something that doesn't mean anything. Pastor Dante, what do you mean? Well, if I want something that's not fruitful, I'm lusting. Like, so if you want somebody's husband, drop the car tag. You want somebody's husband? If you want something that's not fruitful for you, he may be fine, girl, but he's not fruitful. He may be fine, but he just moved out of his mama house. Give him a little time to figure things out. It's not fruitful yet. But if he got to move in with you, you can't move in with him. You might not be fruitful. So lust is wanting something that's not fruitful. Deceit is what you'll do to get what you want that's not fruitful. And it's those things that are choking your life. Choking your life. Choking your life. Choking your life. For some of y'all, Instagram is choking you. Because you get on there and you lust and deceit. Lust and deceit. Lust and deceit. Okay, Pastor Dante, I know how it's lust, but how is it deceit? Because you'll clean up this area in your room. Don't do no good to shout at y'all if I can't help y'all now. You'll clean up just the small spaces. Take them clothes and throw them over here. It's 
stand in front of somebody else's car in the parking lot. Lust and deceit. Lust and deceit is choking your life. Because when you could really be seeking the things of God, when you're really, when you could really be seeking the things and going after what God had for you and going after what he had for your family, listen, I'll high side when I get to the high side. I'll high side when I, I'll front when I get to the front. But I'm not going to front when I'm in the back. That's foolish. I'll front when I get to the front. I'm supposed to be there anywhere because he said I'm the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. So I'll front when I get to the front, but until then, I'm just going to keep it. So, casting my seed, worrying about my seed, not getting choked at the Bible. I love that the Bible says it's, it's choking you. Social media is choking for you. You can't breathe. You feel like a failure. You feel like a failure. Because everybody saved enough money to go on, to buy a $99 plane ticket to Vegas. And you can't go because you don't got no PTO. And everybody's up there toasting, and you choking. Everybody's toasting, and you choking. Everybody's choking. So everybody's toasting, and you choking. I'm not gonna be there. No, I'm gonna be in here. And when you, the Bible said, whatever thy hands find to do, do it with all thy might. Got no time to be messing with y'all, scrolling on this, uh, looking at your lies and deceit. I got to figure out what I got to do. <laughs> Pastor Dante, did you see what I posted on Facebook? No, nope, probably not. Because when I'm on Facebook, I'm doing this. Boom. Not. Some of y'all I can't follow on Facebook anyway. I love you, but I can't follow you on Facebook. <laughs> Look, they, they got quiet. But some of y'all keep coming up in my people you should know. Some of y'all laughing because I keep coming up in your people you should know. <laughs> you like, ignore. <laughs> Go to my page and click the follow button. You don't have to, we don't have to be friends. You could just get some of that good word. <laughs> Somebody say thorny ground. It's, it's the weeds. It's the weeds. Now, the problem with weeds is that weed looks like grass. Weeds look like grass until they full grown. But by the time they full grown, they're an infestation. It's a problem. Because weeds, now don't, they, they, they grow at a faster rate than grass. I can't deal with this. I can't stay right here. I, weeds grow at a faster rate than fruit. Fruit will never grow as fast as weed will. And the weeds will, when they get, when they overtake, they'll suffocate your fruit. They'll suffocate your fruit. You want to know what else is weed? I'm here. Hit my heart right here. What you watch on TV. What you listen to on the radio. Pastor Dante, I mean, I live in the world. Me too. Me too. But there's some things you got to know. There's some places you got to know. Okay. It's past 11 o'clock. I can't watch these channels up here. This whole list up here. Everything above 500. Have self discipline. Gotta you know, know, know thyself. Know thyself. Know thyself. 
You got to know. The Bible says your heart is exceedingly wicked. Who can know it? You can't wait to watch power. Listen, I watch I watch power. I'm uh, it's fine. You know, I don't set an appointment in the DVR and uh, you know I gotta get home, girl. No, I ain't gotta do all that. But hear me right here. If I knew it was choking out my seed, if I was fruitless, if I start looking around and saying, Well, I sold a seed, but I see no fruit. Maybe I need to listen, it's fifty days till twenty twenty. I told myself I'm going to go on a 50-day 50, 50 fast because I want to walk into the new. You know 20 is the new decade. This is the end of, of a 10-year. Some of y'all, oh, hear me right here. Some of y'all, this has been the worst 10 years of your life. You need to start preparing yourself for what God is going to do in this next decade because the, the Bible says the latter rain shall be greater than the former rain. And if you believe that God is going to do something different in 2020, maybe you should start doing something different with 50 days left in 2020 because I believe in 2019 because I believe that at the shift of this decade, I believe at the shift of this 10-year decade that God is going to do something different for me. Different from my family. Different for our church. My grandson is going to be born in January. <laughs> Telling me you don't see God's timing? That's just mine. You need to start thinking about what God's going to shift for you in January. Because if you go into next year, like you came into this last year, then you're going to get the same thing you got this year, next year. I'm going to start 50. Start 50. 50 days right now. I'm going to start right now. Fasting for my 20 years. Not, not for my 2020. For my 2020s. Do y'all know what's about to, happen, about to happen in 50 days? You about to move into a whole new decade. I'm going to start fasting right now for my family. Now, I thought about calling the church to a fast. But a lot of times, calling a new church like ours into a fast is calling myself into disappointment. So I can't call all y'all into a fast. But what I can say is start shipping something now. Start shipping something now so that the weeds aren't choking out your family. So that the weeds aren't choking out your kids. So that the weeds aren't choking out. Listen and hear me right here. You've been here all this time. You might as well be here five more minutes. Hear me right here. The devil's trying to choke out your family. Choke out your relationship. Husbands, hear me right here. He's trying to choke out your family, you and your wife. Y'all been fighting more than ever. In the days leading up to a shift in timing, God is a God of numbers. You think he don't care? That you think he don't care? That it's about to shift to a new decade? But here, here's the place where you got to start sacrificing. That might look like waking up some ground. That might look like, girl, we're going to be on time to church today. I don't know what y'all usually be doing, but we're going to fix this. We're not going to go into 2020 with this. Some of y'all going to need some 2020 friends. I'm not telling you to get rid of the 2019 friends. I'm telling you, listen, because I'm not going to say this in the new year because it's corny. But you need some friends that have vision for your next season. You need some friends that's got 2020 vision for your next season. You need some friends that can see what you can't see. And he who wants friends has to show himself friendly. I've talked to you about this before. A $30 lunch could change your life. A $30 lunch and the courage to say, hey, can I, can I take you, Pastor Ravon, can I take you to lunch? Because I need what you got. Pastor Kev, I, I see a fire on you. I need, I need that. Can I, can I take you to lunch? Is that possible? Pastor Adriana, I see how you do it quietly. I see when you tell one person to go and they go, you tell another one to come and they come and nobody ever hears your voice. I need that skill because I'm loud. And 
God, take me tonight. God, I just, God, I, I just need more time with you. I just need to be more intimate with you. God, I just want to spend more time with you. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pray every day at twelve, twelve, for fifty days, and see what God does. I'm just gonna cut out a meal or two. Of course, I'm gonna be hungry. When you don't eat, you get hungry. You ain't going to die. Start thinking about how you get to your promised land. Just start thinking. This is a, uh, uh, my sister's here, y'all. Uh, 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 my sister was like one of my heroes. When I was growing up, my sister was one of the fastest people in the nation. Not in our neighborhood. She ran Anchor. Now, Anchor, Anchor is the last leg. That person gets to make up ground. Ground that you lost early. That person is responsible to make up ground. Some of y'all need an Anchor spirit right now. So what you do is you, you put your fastest person at the end. So just in case y'all got behind, we got Shay Shay. Some of y'all, this is that this is that 50 days left. It's time to start running that anchor. Come around that curve. God's trying to do something in your life. This is the season for it. Stand up. Everybody stand up. I want you to hear me right now. I want you to hear me right here. Matter of fact, come on, hands lifted, everybody. Eyes closed. I want you to hear me right here. If you suffered at all in this last decade, I'm believing that God will, that God is going to have a supernatural shift in you in the next decade. Some of y'all, you know, hey, 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 if, it was, if it was great for you, it was great. But it was tough for me. I went through some things. I had some issues. But I believe that God is doing a new thing in my life. And here and here now, now I'm going to start getting ready. I'm going to start preparing for, I'm going to start preparing for, hear me still. Eyes closed, hands up, hear me still. I want to give a practical example. Whenever we're going to get new furniture, we got to shift, we got to shift out the old furniture. We got to shift out the old stuff. We got to start repositioning the living room because God's going to do a new thing in our house. This is what God wants to do with you in this next 50 days. I believe that God is shifting some things in your life. He's shifting some things in your service. Some of y'all can see it right now. You can see it right now. You can visualize it right now. God is moving around some furniture in your life. That's why you feel uncomfortable right now. That's why it's difficult right now. Some of y'all, even... even even this month has been the hardest month. October was the hardest month of your whole year. And that's because God says it's time for a shift. It's time for a change. You've been doing it your way, now do it my way. You've been trying it on your own. You've been doing it on your own strength. He said, now turn it over to me. No more lust, no more deceit. No more sneaking around. God said, this is the season now. I'm releasing you from having to sneak around. I'm releasing you from having, hear me right here, from that underground sin. Not the sin that you're okay with everybody knowing about, the sin that don't nobody know about. God said, I'm freeing you from that right now. I'm freeing that. You won't take that into your 2020. Behaviors, bad habits. God says, instead of choking out your good stuff, that the good stuff is about to start choking out the bad stuff. You got to receive it right now. Come on, hands lifted. Hands lifted all over this place. Do you receive it? Do you receive it? I want you just, just in your own voice, in your own tongue, just begin to say, thank you, Father. I receive it, Jesus. I receive it, God. 
I receive what you're doing in here. I receive what you're doing in my life. I believe you're doing a new thing. Come on, God chases. I believe you're doing a new thing. Come on, God chases. I believe you're doing a new thing. And I believe you're going to do it in me, God. So I, 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 I'm ready to study more, God. And I'm ready to go deeper, God. I think I feel a call on my life. Thank you, Jesus. I think I'm called to ministry. I think I'm called to do something for God. I feel a strong longing, God. Lord, I, I feel like you're, you're getting me ready for marriage. You're getting me ready for my next season, God. You're getting me ready because you're about to do something. You're getting, ready, getting me ready for management. I'm frustrated at my job because you want me to start the business that you've been putting in my heart. If that's you today, I, I want you to just take 30 seconds and give God glory because he's already did it. He's already fixed it. Come on, come on, come on. 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice in here. Lift your voice. If you believe he's doing it, if you believe he's fixing it, if you believe he's turning it around. Listen, I want to do I want to do a couple of things. The first thing is, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, listen, hear me right here. This is the season to shift it all around. You've just been going through the motions. Drinking, not working no more. You don't even get drunk. I got to help everybody. Getting high, not working no more. You don't even get high. You said, I need something else, God. I want to try a new thing. I'm, I'm here to do a new thing. I, I believe that you're doing a new thing in me. If that's you today, I want to offer you Christ. Listen. Since the day I accepted Christ... I haven't been perfect. I've just been different. It's about progress, not perfection. I'm trying to progress. I'm not the same as I was. Does that make sense? So today I believe that if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you'll never be the same again. And it's a simple prayer. Again, we talked about this earlier. You don't have to do nothing. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. We're going to say a simple prayer and everybody's going to say it. Come on. Our heads bowed. Every eye still closed because I need some, pe some people to really co contemplate this moment right here. All heads bowed and every eye closed still. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we're going to all say a prayer together so you don't feel alone. But if it's you today, I want you to mean it in your heart. Just say, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that you forgive sins. So I receive your forgiveness today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now if you said that prayer for the first time. Or, or let's say you said it before, but Pastor Dante, this time I mean it. This time I mean it. This time I mean it. I feel changed in my spirit. I feel changed in my heart. What I'm going to do is count to three. And when I get to three, I want you to take a step of faith and just raise your hand as high as you can raise it. One, it doesn't matter who you came here with. It doesn't matter what they think about it. Two, the only thing that matters is Jesus loves you. He cares about you. And he wants you back to him. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Three, raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Come on, and the saints of God are rejoicing all over this building. Come on, come on, lift that hand. If it's you, lift that hand. If it's you, lift that hand. Stop worrying about what people think about you. If it's you, lift that hand. I want to do another thing. I want to do another thing. I want to do another thing. You say, Pastor Dante, I want to start into 2020 right. And I know it's not 2020 yet, but I've been flirting with this church for a long time. I've been, I, I've been coming, but I'm not committed. I've been fellowshipping, but I'm not connected. Listen, I think it's time for you to get connected. I want to be your pastor. Hear my, hear my heart right here. I want to be your pastor. The one thing I know I'm called to do is love on people. 
I know I'm called to do that. More than I'm called to preach or sing or do anything else, I'm called to love on people. And you know the people I love the best? The broken ones. If you don't believe me, just ask your neighbor. Ask around. Look around. There's a whole bunch of broken people in here. And I am chief. I am chief for the broken people because I was broken. If you say, Pastor Dante, I need a church home. Because I, 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 hear me right here. The ground is too hard. You need somewhere where you can get connected. You need somewhere where you can trust people. If that's you today, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this one more time. I'd love, I'd be honored to be your pastor. I'd be head over heels honored to be your pastor. My wife and I will love on you. And we will do our best to raise up leaders that will help you and that will point you in the right direction. But you got to trust somebody. You got to trust somebody. If that's you today, I'm asking you to come down this aisle, grab all your stuff, come down this aisle and take my hand and say, I'm going to be a part of the baddest church experience in San Antonio. Act like you go here. Act like you go here. Come on, if that's you. If that's you. <laughs> Bless you. Follow that young lady right here. Tell me your name. Say it again one more time. Brittany. Everybody say, hey, Brittany. Welcome to God Chasers, Brittany. Do me a favor. Follow that young lady right there. Tell me your name, man. Kevin. Kevin. Everybody say, hey, Kevin. All right. Welcome to God Chasers, Kevin. Follow these people right, right here. Tell me your name. April. Who is all these people? My babies. <laughs> Tell us that name. This is Levante, Leilani, and Jordan. Levante, that, I love that name. That sounds like Dante. What's up, man? There it goes. What's up, man? Everybody say welcome, y'all. Welcome. Come on, God chasers. Why y'all not? Hey. Tell us your name. Lolita. Lolita. Everybody say hey, Lolita. Welcome to God chasers, Lolita. God bless you. Follow these people right here. Come on, God chasers. Y'all need to be making some noise in here. Come on. I want you to do something else. I want you, in fact, do it. I got to mature y'all. I got to mature y'all. Okay. I want you to start preparing your offering. Just start preparing your offering right where you are. Start preparing your offering. I know some of y'all give on Friday when you get paid. That's wonderful. Whatever. But I, I, I'm expecting everybody to get an offering in their hand right now. Everybody get some. Get your phone out. You can text. I don't know what the text number is. 84321. Text any amount to 84321. Do me a favor. Just grab just grab something. If you need an envelope, they're going to pass by with envelopes. Even if you don't got it right now, I need you to take an envelope. You know what? Have a seat. Everybody have a seat. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. I want to do this expeditiously. If you need it, come on, y'all. Help them. I see hands all over here. It's, a, it's three of y'all over here, Doug. It's three of y'all over here. It's nobody. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay. All right. Get a, get a, get a seed in your hand. Listen, the, the Bible does, the Bible has something called Kairos. The Bible has something called Kairos. Kairos is not a time. I know it's 2.30. It's 2.30. Lord Jesus, forgive me. It's 2.30. But, but this is, it's not 2.30. It's a moment. I want you to sow into this moment right here. Now, if you have a regular uh, offering, regular tithe, I want you to give that. This should be over and above your regular tithe. I don't care if it's $5. I don't care if it's $10. I, I, I want to teach you to sow because your seeds matter. Your seeds matter. Your seeds matter. I was at a conference last night. I was at a conference last night, and I heard a man say, I want 20 people who have $220 for the new season. And I was like, cool, I can do that. He said, I want 20 people with $220. I said, I'll sow into this. This is wonderful. It's a great conference. I'm ready for it. He said, I have 20 people who are going to sow $220. He said, but I have some other people who are going to sow more. He said, so if you part of the 20, come up here. God arrested me. He said, no, that's not enough. See, see, it's not a seed if you don't feel it leaving. not a seed if you don't feel it leaving. So 
show y'all there's going to be 13 of us. It's not a seat if you don't feel it leave. He said the next call, he said, he said somebody in here, five people are supposed to sow $1,000. My legs loosened up. I said, well, thank you, Jesus. I feel good. My knees feel better. Thank you, Jesus. I was locked in. God said, no, that's you right here, 1000 Go sow $1,000. I'm not asking y'all to sow $1,000. Girl, you better pay your rent. What I'm asking you is to sow a seed. Some of y'all, you got a number in your head right now. It just came in there. You don't know why. You don't know where it came from. You, you, you just got it. That's what I, I'm not calling a specific number. It might be five. It might be 10. It might be 15. It might be 20. But some of y'all, you won't even. God is worth more than a happy man. to ask you to sow into this moment above your tithe, above your offering. If you don't tithe, if you don't tithe, you're missing a miracle anyway. But here's the place where you can take a chance on God. Don't take a chance on me, wayside people. Take a chance on God. See, won't he do it? See, won't he fix it? See, won't he turn it around? Now, I want to do something significant as well. Before you sow it, some of y'all, you can fill out your envelope. You can pay online, whatever it is. You can start doing that now. I want to do something as well. There's somebody in here, and you said, Pastor Dante, I really would like to sow, but I don't got nothing. I don't have anything in there. I, I, I'm really just being honest with myself. I don't have nothing. If that's you today, I want you to take a step of faith, and I want you to stand up on your feet. If you say, I want to give, Pastor Dante, I wish I had something to give. I don't have nothing to give. If that's you today, just stand up on your feet. Come on, I'll wait for you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Nobody's going to judge you here. Nobody's going to judge you here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Nobody's going to judge you here. We your family. Now, I want to do something. I want, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, my man in the back right there, the five, okay, six. Can six people give these people something to sow? Can six people walk over to that person, put something in their hand? Now, what they put in your hand belongs to you. Come on, come on, do it quickly, do it expeditiously, do it right now, do it right now, do it right now, don't wait, do it right now. If God put it on your heart, give them something to sow. Now, hear me right here, stay where you are, stay where you are, stay where you are. That money they put in your hand doesn't belong to me, it doesn't belong to them, it, doesn't, it belongs to you, it doesn't belong to God, it don't belong to God till you give it to them. I want you to trust God in this season. I want you to trust God in this season. If you need it, need it, put it in your pocket. And you'll be blessed and we'll pray for you. If you need it, need it, put it in your pocket. But here we go. If you believe what I'm saying to you today, I dare you to sow it into your future. I dare you to sow it into your future and believe that God is going to do a new thing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God. I thank you for a harvest that belongs to this church. I thank you for the sowers, God, that belong to this church. I thank you for the ground that is good soil. Lord Jesus. A good soil where fruit is taking root and something is growing, Jesus. Something's growing in this body. Something's growing in this church body. Lord, I bind the spirit of poverty over these people. I bind the spirit of poverty over these people. I bind the spirit of broke over these people, Lord Jesus. Give them a, a divine faith that'll push them into a new season, God. And Lord, we receive your offering, God. We receive your offering. Some 30. Some 60. Some 100 fold. Listen, if I get a 30-fold blessing, I'm not going to get mad at the person who got a 60-fold blessing. At least I got a 30-fold blessing. If I got a 60-fold blessing, I'm going to celebrate the person that got a 100-fold blessing because at least I got a 60-fold blessing. And if I got a 100-fold blessing, I'm going to continue to sow because until everybody wins. 
Come on. Come on. Until everybody wins. Until everybody wins. Can we give God a praise for everybody winning today?